Hey Yogi friends, welcome back. I'm Kelsey, I'm Kelsey Yogi here, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And today I'm gonna to try to help you get into that puppy press. So if you have not started pressing yet and, and it's something that you want to do, pressing is basically when you are taking some type of inversion, whether it's a headstand, a form stand, or a handstand, and you wanna just gracefully float your legs up rather than jumping. So the nicest one to start with, I think the most basic, uh, gives you a little bit more leeway, a little bit more tweaking that you can do is the puppy press. Puppy press basically has a one leg pulled in and the other leg out straight. And you can do this in any of the different inversions that you want. I always suggest working the easier inversions first. So if you're wanting to get it in your handstand, then make sure that first you can do it in your forearm stand. Really easy, you can drill it in your headstand, do it again and again and again, so that it's like common sense, like your body just knows exactly what to do. That way when you're struggling more with the harder types of inversions like handstands, you've already got all of those down so well, those, those uh, techniques, the strength, all the places that you need to shift, your body knows it, and so there's less having to think it through once you're in that handstand position. All right, so let me break down this puppy press for you. One of the biggest things that people don't do when they're puppy pressing is, or they're wanting to and they're not getting it, is they're not allowing themselves to get that lean. So I'm gonna break all this down in handstand, uh, but we can talk about forearm stand in a little bit because it's a little bit different, but for the most part, they're really the same. All right, so if you haven't already, you're gonna wanna activate the core. Do some, uh, you know, pause this video, do 100 bicycle crunches, do some, you know, 50 forearm plank hip dips, get the core nice and activated. You need the core active in order to help lift those legs up. While you're at it too, you know, I'll link it down below, but uh, do some of those hip flexor drills that would get the hip flexors ready to lift. We really need those areas ready to work and the shoulders. So the shoulders need to be warmed up. Definitely do some mobility, some stretching. And, uh, and then when you're ready, come back and let's get that puppy press going. So the biggest issue people have is they don't lean and they don't get the hips over the shoulders. So what I'm saying is they may come into their puppy press somewhat like this. See, I'm not leaning the shoulders over the wrists and I don't have the hips up high over the shoulders. If the hips are way back here, they're going to be really hard to lift. It's possible, it's just a lot more work. So instead, I always remind people, shoulders come over the wrists and the hips come up over the shoulders. So the issue with that may be is that you have really tight hamstrings. While you're stretching out those shoulders, stretch the hamstrings. You have to have nice, long, stretched out hamstrings in order to make this happen. So if you don't have a really deep forward fold, both with the legs wide and with the legs together, work that first, work that pancake, work that standing and that seated forward fold, get those things in your back pocket and the presses may come automatically. You're like, oh wow, once I stretch the hamstrings, I really could get the hips up nice and high, the legs just floated up. So what we can do if we don't have really open hamstrings, really long hamstrings, is use some blocks. You don't have to have blocks. You could use, you know, a kitchen chair or a really stable step stool. You just have to have a way to get the hips up nice and high. So I will show you here so that I am facing towards you. Legs a little wide, not, not crazy wide, about a leg's length or so. And the nice thing about this is you can see now my hips are much higher than when they're like this. I get a nice, you know, four or five inches where the hips come up nice and high. I'll show you from the side. With the blocks, hips are nice and high. Without the blocks, the hips are much lower. So when you're on the blocks, you can even go even further and shift all the way up on the tiptoes. But when you shift up onto the tiptoes, did you see what happened to my shoulders? They had to go forward. As the shoulders move forward, you're putting more weight into the upper body. The fingers start to grip the ground. Those are your brakes. They're gonna stop you from falling over. So get ready for that big push out of the shoulders because the shoulders are having to stabilize when the hips go nice and high. At first, this can feel really spooky. You're like, oh crap, you know, I'm gonna bust my face on the ground. But that's what the press is. It's a push. It's a push out of the shoulders so that the legs can float up. You have to be ready to push the floor away Stretch the shoulders out nice and wide. Let me show you that again. I'm on my blocks, the hips are high, but I need even more of a lift. My hands are right underneath the shoulders. I come up on my tippy tip toes, and I have to start this grip. I have to start this big push out of the shoulders. The low belly pulls in, and I start to round through the back a little bit to even more so engage the abs 
and get the hips up even higher. So practice that a few times, shifting forward, up on the tiptoes, and notice how the arms have to activate in order to keep you from falling forward. <clears throat> the next thing that you can do is start to bend one leg and come up on just the tiptoes of your stronger side leg. So it works out for me that my stronger leg, I actually happen to be more flexible on the other side. So I'm gonna lift the left leg and I'm gonna come up onto the tippy toes of my right leg. It's gonna look like this. Hands down, just underneath the shoulders, about shoulders width or so, hi kitty. Now I'm going to bend the left knee. A lot of people do this. This is not what I want you to do. Instead, I want you to pull the thigh to your belly. Think about closing the space right here. This area is gonna compress and close and the right leg is gonna stay down and up on the tiptoe. So shift forward. Lift that left knee. Do you see how I close this space? Knee is coming towards the ribs. I'm not opening the hip, but I'm closing it and I'm lifting it nice and high. Let me show you from the side. <clears throat> because this form is so much of why these puppy presses aren't working, when you open that leg up, it works, but it doesn't really work as well because you're not getting that compression. You're not asking the core to turn on, the abs to activate. So again, shift forward. My toes are staying down on the right, and the left knee is lifting and closing. Not opening, closing, okay? So important. Now I have another trick that you're gonna try because it's gonna help you with that puppy press because as you lift the leg, you're gonna wanna open it up. Instead, I want you to teach your brain to think compression, to think flexion. So I have a trick that I've been using. I learned this on Instagram. I can't remember who taught me, I wish I knew. But you use a ball. You could use a dish rag, you could use a um, folded up socks, and you're going to put the ball, the socks, whatever it is that you have, right here where your hip flexor is, right where the top of your thigh is going to meet your low belly. And you're going to put it in here, and you're going to close it and hold it. And then you can't let it go. I personally like my little, it's actually a dog toy, <laughs> but I like this one better. I obviously um, don't play ball, I just do yoga. <laughs> I like this one because of the little spicules, it's easier to grip. Once you get this in this little hip flexor nook, this area right where your jeans would seem, I want you to hold it there. So I'm gonna put it in there as I fold. Now my job is to not drop that ball. Hands down, tippy tippy toes of that right foot, lean forward, now I'm gonna to start to close that leg side. See, if you open it, the ball's likely to fall. Instead, I'm gonna close it. From here, we can start playing with a little bit of floating. Don't squish the kitty. <laughs> that was a game that I developed to help uh, stay nice and strong in my handstands. If a cat or one of the dogs walked underneath me, it was like, control this, Kelsey, control this. Do not fall on your animal. <laughs> so it forced me to uh, slow things down, resist gravity. And that's one of the things that you're going to do, too. Anytime that you start to hop up in these puppy presses, and in the beginning, they are hops. I know initially you want that float time. But in the beginning, you're going to hop a little bit, and as soon as you catch that air time, control it. Get very calm through the mind, start to grip through the hands, pushing out of the shoulders, feeling that activation where you're pulling the knee in to the belly. And I want you to resist gravity and go down as slowly as you can. That's your reversal. That's your negative. That's going back down. And it's going to help you so much and be able to lift back up. Anything that goes down, goes back up, goes back up, goes down. Those muscles are the same. So in the beginning, it's easier to learn to hop up, control, 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 resist the way down, that's your negative. As you control and resist and work that negative, you're actually developing the same muscles, that same inner strength that you're gonna need in order to float up. So start with your blocks, give yourself that height, use your ball so that you can feel that compression and start with a little bit of hopping. All right, I don't need the ball anymore, but I want you to use the ball for a good month or so so that you learn that compression. Use that trick, it helps so much. And like I said, initially, you're gonna hop. It's gonna look like this. I'm gonna switch legs so that you can see. My right knee's gonna close, and I'm on my left tippy toes, and I'm just gonna kind of hop off of this foot. Hop, little jumps, and then activate that leg as soon as you think you find a little float. Activate point or flex, and see if you can hold and push and go slow, go slow, go slow, go slow, on the way down. Even that in itself, please don't be discouraged, even that in itself, to resist gravity, to fight that negative, you may spend three or four months going, I don't know 
what she means. I'm trying to resist gravity. I'm trying to push the floor away. I'm trying not to fall. And it's not working. I don't know why she can do it and I can't do it. I just fall. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're not doing anything wrong. It just takes a lot of persistent practice, coming at it again and again and again, and thinking to yourself, okay, I fell. I'm coming back down every time, but it's coming. It's coming. I, I'm starting to feel that time I hopped, but I also felt a little floor. I think I felt a little control. It wasn't just all strength from the legs. I felt something happening in my center, in my core. And then when I fell down, I fell a little slower. And then the next time you fall a little slower. And you know, six months later, you controlled the fall down and you were able to resist it for a few seconds. A year later, you can resist it for <laughs> as long as you want. It's a slow journey and it's one that can't be rushed and they have to continue to show up to again and again and again. Linus, go lay down. <laughs> so I want you to be very patient with this puppy press, straddle press, all the presses that you do, you have to continue to show up to them. Don't beat yourself up internally and just keep doing your very best. So let's get rid of the blocks and I'm gonna start to show you other ways that you can start to um, feel that floaty feeling with your puppy press. <clears throat> by practice, 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 practice. So hands are right underneath the shoulders. You're gonna get that shift forward, low belly pulls in. We're gonna close one knee up, not open, close, and then lean and start to grip. Okay, nothing's happening, I can't get my leg up. It's not, it's not going anywhere, what do I do? I bend the knee and I hop and I resist. Hop and I resist, hop. Until you get a little bit of pain time, and then you resist it all the way down. And I want you to work both sides. So even if this leg feels really wonky and you don't get a good, you don't get a good float, you have to pop the whole way. That's all right. And then you resist it on the way down. <clears throat> One other thing that may help you when you're trying to find that puppy press and you're trying to find that float, like I mentioned earlier, is to work it in a lower form. So if you're pretty good at forearm stand, or you're pretty good at headstand, then you're going to drill it. So what I mean by drill it is, say you can't even do it in a handstand. I can't float, my leg isn't getting off the ground, I'm just hopping, and I'm not getting any negative time, it's so frustrating. But I can do it in a headstand, or I can do it in a forearm stand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add ankle weights, or I'm going to add reps. So let's do this puppy pose, or this puppy press, excuse me, in a forearm stand. I'll do it so you can see. I got my left knee bent and closed. Let's say, okay, oh, my leg just floats right up. Cool. Then I'm going to resist gravity and drill it and drill it and go over it again and again and again until it gets to the point where it feels so natural in the forearm stand that I can almost kind of exhaust myself. So you get what I'm saying. You're going to drill it so many times, say, oh, I'm gonna make myself do 10 times on each leg in the forearm stand, or I'm going to put on my two pound ankle weights and I'm going to do it three times on each leg, let myself rest, do three sets of that, just like you would lift weights at the gym. You're going to drill this in sets of threes or sets of fives until those hip flexors and still until that core, until the hamstrings have gotten so strong that you can do it very easily in your forearm stand and then you're gonna go back to your handstand. You're going to take the weights off. You're going to, you know, even maybe give yourself a few days to rest and recover because it's gonna be hard. You added in those weights, you drilled so many reps. You're gonna be sore, you're gonna feel it through the hip flexor, so give yourself a little recovery time, but play with it now in handstand. Now you've drilled it in so strong that when you come back to doing it on your hands, you may feel like, oh, 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 what happened? I got a little float time. Wow, where did that come from? Because you have done it so many times, your brain understands. Your brain knows what the job is now, and it's much easier able to just fall back into that same pattern. Now, a couple things that I really want you to think about when you're coming into these puppy presses is that you have to lean forward. You have to lean forward, you have to start to grip with the fingers, and you have to lengthen the straight leg. Get those hips nice and high. If you try to press up, and you don't keep the straight leg active, it's going to be that much heavier for you. So these are the things that I'm thinking of as I shift into my puppy press. Hands down, strong shoulders, rounded upper back, low belly pulls in, all right? 
and I'm gripping with my fingers. My gaze is right down between my hands. I'm gonna lift one leg, close it up, and then see how this straight leg is very active and straight? If I tried to press up with a lazy leg, it's so much heavier. This is so much heavier than a nice active straight leg that is locked out. So when you're doing those hip flexor drills, and I will link that video down below, make sure that you're really using a nice, strong, straight leg with a pointed toe. Because when you're pressing and that leg is nice and straight, it's gonna carry its weight. A lazy, floppy leg, it's just not doing anything for you. It's making you do so much more work. All right, so hopefully you got a couple of tips or tricks that will help you with your puppy press. Remember, you've gotta lean, you've gotta shift forward. You've gotta grip with those fingertips pushing out of the shoulders, that's where that press comes from. Get those hips nice and high. That means you need to use two blocks on each side, so you got four blocks underneath you, then do it. If it means you gotta stand on the edge of your bed in order to feel that float, then do that. And then slowly work your way down to a lower and a lower stance, that way you're not having to be up high forever. The idea is to get rid of the block, because it's not to stay with the blocks forever. Um, and that you gotta find that compression. You gotta find the compression through that bent leg. So put the ball in there, put the socks in there, the towel in there, and feel that squeeze and don't let that ball go. Be okay with hopping. Hopping doesn't matter. It's gonna happen in the beginning and it doesn't mean that you're like a failure at pressing. It means you're still figuring it out and that's just how it's gonna start. It's not always gonna stay that way. Work your reversal. Control the going down. And then if you're able to, take balance out of it. I forgot I got this wheel out. Let me show you what I do with the wheel. So if even holding your handstand or your forearm stand is still really challenging for you, you're gonna feel like, well, why would I even try to puppy press? I can't hold a handstand. I will say that I worked on finding my presses at the same time that I worked on learning the balance of a handstand. I did them at the same time and they kind of grew together. I, I could hold five or 10 seconds maybe, which isn't a very long time, um, but I started doing my pressing then and I think that the strength that I developed for pressing helped me with my endurance for holding and vice versa. So let's take balance out of it when you're working with the handstand and use a wheel. The other option that you could always do is and get one of those big exercise balls, push it up against your wall, and you're gonna push your crown of your head into the ball. Let me show you. I don't wanna move the camera, but hopefully you'll get an idea for what I'm saying. You get one of these exercise balls, push it into the wall, and then what I would do if I was using this is I would push my crown of my head into the ball, and this is going to give me something to stabilize against. And then when I want a puppy press, now I can push my head into the ball and I don't have to worry about the balance of the handstand as much. Instead, I can just focus on the mechanics, focus on the stability, because I have something to balance off of. And you can do the same thing if you happen to have one of these yoga wheels. Uh, they were kind of popular a few years back. A lot of yogis have them. You can do the same type of thing. I think exercise balls are a little bit more handy. I like using them a lot more. So if I was gonna invest in something, I'd get that. They're like, I don't know, 20 bucks at Walmart. <clears throat> but you can do it with a yoga wheel too. Notice I have a block in the front and the back. Otherwise, your wheel is going to roll away. The other option is to put your wheel right up against the wall and then put the block in front of it. Again, so your wheel can't roll away. The ideal is that you're creating stability so that you don't have to balance on your hands and you can just focus on the strength of your press. Same type of thing. You're going to put the crown of your head down. Now I have something to push into and that gives me a little bit of stability, and I can just kind of play around with the legs. Now you may still need to have your blocks down. If you have four blocks, that would be ideal. You can have two blocks for your feet, two blocks for the wheel, crown of the head, not exactly the crown of my head, the crown of my head is here, and I'm pushing just a couple of inches in front of that, but still it's quite a big push out of the shoulders. The only thing I don't love about this is it does take the head farther forward than what you would be able to hold when you're holding a handstand by yourself. If you were in a real handstand, you would never have your head that far forward. It's way too much pressure on the wrist and the angle just doesn't make sense. So I don't love that, but if what you're thinking of is, I wanna feel what the puppy press feels like. I wanna know what it feels like to get the legs to float up and I don't have to worry about the balance issue of the handstand. That's a great tool then, because I want you to have that feeling, that sensation of, oh, that's what it feels like when my legs float. Because once you get that feeling, grab it, hold on to it, that excitement that you feel, I want you to hold that because that's gonna help you come back to your puppy press again and again and again. All right, so you can use something like that in order to help you find 
um, stability. That way you don't have to worry about the balance aspect of it. Alrighty, there you go guys. So the ball, the wheel, uh, these kinds of balls for the compression, blocks, ankle weights, those kinds of things have helped so much in me finding my puppy press. And just remember, you've got to drill it and drill it and drill it. It's something that you're going to have to do hundreds of times. Let that frustration go. It's just part of the journey. Nothing magical will happen when you finally get that puppy or that straddle press. It's exciting and it's fun to have, but it doesn't make you like a better yogi. You're not going to feel magical all of a sudden. So just enjoy the journey. You will learn the most through your failures, through your frustrations, through those small victories. That's what's going to really help you grow in your handstand or your pressing practice. And, and just enjoy it once you're upside down. It, it, nothing else really happens besides you go, oh, that's so fun, good for me. And then you can share it with other people. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I hope you found your puppy press. Got a little tip or trick that helped you get upside down and stay there. And uh, that's it. So make sure you comment below. Subscribe if you haven't. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok. And that's it. Have a great day. Namaste.